Welcome back to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. Bretton Woods Committee released a report titled Strengthening the Bretton Woods Institutions to Meet 21st Century Global Challenges. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Coral Reef Watch and International Coral Reef Initiative has confirmed fourth global mass coral bleaching event. Interagency Space Debris Coordination Committee annual meeting held. United Nations Conference on Trade and Development published the Trade and Development Report update April 2024. As per a new study, women's representation in Indian academia in STEM are very low. Ministry of Law and Justice notifies panel to address issues related to the queer community. Starting with the first news. Bretton Woods Committee released a report titled Strengthening the Bretton Woods Institutions to Meet 21st Century Global Challenges. This is the first of its kind report from Bretton Woods Committee's Multilateral Reform Working Group, which has been formed to address how multilateral systems can be strengthened. For those unfamiliar with BWC, it's worth noting that this non-profit organization, founded in 1983, is dedicated to fostering effective global economic and financial cooperation. Bretton Woods Institutions, established in 1944 by 43 countries with an aim to help rebuild post-war economy and promote international economic cooperation, are World Bank and International Monetary Fund. Multilateralism led by international financial institutions has driven high growth and globalization, benefiting the global population. However, the report underscores two critical challenges to this growth. Crises in the global commons have dominated and had profoundly negative effects on the world economy, eroding gains in health, education, and productivity. Moreover, while there is widespread acknowledgement of these challenges, tangible progress has been sluggish. The report attributes this inertia to the fragmented nature of the global economy and escalating geopolitical tensions. So what are the proposed solutions to strengthen the BWIs and address these pressing issues? The recommendations outlined in the report offer a roadmap for revitalizing these institutions. They include establishment of ministerial level councils in BWIs to oversee issues pertaining to global commons. Moreover, it advocates for design instruments and institutional arrangements to finance the means to face climate challenges. Also, it focuses on expanding climate-linked financial instruments. And additionally, it says to establish a permanent mechanism to conduct systematic review of progress of global financing and implementation plans. At last, now let's understand what exactly are global commons. Global commons are those parts of the planet that fall outside national jurisdictions and to which all nations have access. International law identifies four global commons, namely the high seas, the atmosphere, Antarctica and outer space. Moving ahead in the news. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Coral Reef Watch and International Coral Reef Initiative has confirmed fourth global mass coral bleaching event. Mass bleaching has been devastating coral reefs across the globe since early 2023, affecting at least 53 countries, territories and local economies, including Australia's Great Barrier Reef. This marks the second such event in the last 10 years, with an earlier event lasting from 2014 to 2017. Before moving further, it's important to know what corals are and what are the factors involved in their growth. Let's dive into the details. Corals are invertebrate animals belonging to a large group of animals called Cnidaria. They're generally classified as hard coral or soft coral. Coral reefs are formed by polyps of hard corals, which establish symbiotic relationships with microscopic algae called zooxanthellae, which give them their characteristic colors. Coral reefs mainly thrive in warm, salty, clear, shallow marine waters with stable temperatures and abundant sunlight. Reefs hold great significance as they are often called rainforest of the ocean due to high biodiversity and productivity. They support around 25% of marine life, minimize storm impact, promote tourism and most importantly act as carbon sink. Now let us discuss and understand about coral bleaching. When corals are stressed by changes in conditions such as temperature, light or nutrients, they expel symbiotic algae causing them to turn completely white. Various factors contribute to coral bleaching, for example, increased ocean temperature due to climate change, water runoff and pollution, extreme low tides and ocean acidification. In response to this crisis, global initiatives like ICRI, the Global Fund for Coral Reefs and the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network are working tirelessly to protect these invaluable ecosystems. In India, 
measures such as marine protected areas, integrated coastal zone management, and innovative coral restoration techniques like BioRock technology are being employed to safeguard our coral reefs. Moving on to our next news, Inter-Agency Space Debris Coordination Committee IADC, annual meeting held. In the meeting, the Indian Space Research Organization chief has announced an ambitious goal for the country to achieve debris-free space missions by the year 2030. Space debris refers to all non-functional artificial objects in Earth's orbit or re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. There is an urgent need to mitigate space debris as this growing problem poses a significant threat to space exploration. Collisions with debris can disable operational spacecraft and smaller debris can scour spacecraft's component like solar panels and optics. Space debris can even lead to the Kessler syndrome, an escalating cascade of collisions. Additionally, large space debris that re-enters the atmosphere in an uncontrolled way can survive re-entry and reach the Earth's surface, creating a risk to the population on the ground. To address this challenge, ISRO has taken several initiatives, including the ISRO System for Safe and Sustainable Space Operations Management for efficient information on on-orbit collision and fragmentation, and Project Netra, Network for Space Objects Tracking and Analysis, which aims to establish a space surveillance and tracking network with radars and optical telescopes. Globally, efforts are also underway to mitigate the space debris problem. The Remove Debris mission, for example, is focused on performing key active debris removal technology demonstrations. Additionally, international frameworks such as the UN Liability Convention, that is Convention on International Liability for Damage Caused by Space Object, 1972, and the UN Registration Convention, that is Convention on Registration of Objects Launched into Outer Space, 1976, provide the legal framework for addressing the issue. Now, let us also discuss about International Astronautical Debris Coordination Committee, IADC. It was established in 1993 and serves as an international forum for space agencies, organizations and governmental bodies to exchange information on space debris research activities, facilitate cooperation and identify debris mitigation options. While the IADC is not a regulatory organization, it provides technical recommendations to the global space community. Its members are Space agencies of 13 countries including India's ISRO, USA's NASA, Russia, France, UK, EU, China, Germany, Japan, Canada, South Korea, Ukraine and Italy. Ahead in the news, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development published the Trade and Development Report Update April 2024. The report sheds light on challenges being faced by global merchandise trade, including the impact of developed economies, monetary policies, and the looming global debt crisis. According to the report in 2023, global merchandise trade experienced a decline of approximately 1% in real terms. This drop was attributed to trade tensions among major economies, subdued global demand, and disruptions in key shipping routes. The tightening of monetary policies by major developed economies has had a significant impact on developing nations. Factors that have amplified the impact of rapid and simultaneous tightening of monetary policy by major developed economies include higher debt servicing costs and difficulty in securing new financing options, increase in interest rates in the developed world depreciating developing countries' currencies, double-digit interest rates by central banks of many developing countries had an adverse impact on domestic demand, employment and household incomes. Furthermore, the report highlights the looming global debt crisis. Developing countries are grappling with increasing debt payment obligations. In 2022, they paid $50 billion more to external creditors than they received in new loans. 2022 marks the first occurrence of a net negative resource transfer for all developing countries as a group since 2008. Net negative resource transfer means more resources have gone to developed countries from developing countries. By 2023, nine low-income countries had fallen into debt distress with an additional 25 on the brink. In related developments, the IMF has executive board endorsed reforms to promote the IMF's capacity to support countries undertaking debt restructurings given the ongoing global sovereign debt challenges. Also, reforms are designed to support the existing architecture for debt resolution. However, 
By streamlining processes, the IMF aims to facilitate timely and effective interventions during debt crisis. In our next news, as per a new study, women's representation in Indian academia and STEM are very low. While India produces the highest percentage of women in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics graduates in the world, that is about 40%, still their share in STEM jobs in the country is very low at 14% as per CSIR report 2022. The gradual dropping of women out of the workforce in STEM is referred to as the leaky pipeline and the key reasons for it include marriage, childbirth, lack of family support, gender-blind institutional structures and more. As the country evolves in various aspects, there is an increasing need for women in STEM. It will help to address the shortage of skilled workers in these fields, to ensure gender diversity in a rapidly growing global digital economy, to narrow the gender pay gap and enhance women's economic security. Seeing women in prominent STEM roles can help break down various gender stereotypes while also promoting young girls to pursue these careers. Now let's look at the recommendations made in the study for promoting women in STEM careers. It recommends to institute stable mentorships and support networks in each organization and to mandate the creation of an office for equity and inclusion in every institution. Also, ensuring representation of women scientists on all panels, especially those related to career drives, recruitments, budget proposals and more can go great lengths. Lastly, daycare centers on campus will propagate their involvement even more. Furthermore, let's look at the key initiatives taken to promote women in STEM. In 1995, Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action was launched for gender equality, which calls for women's equal access to science and technology. Under the center's scheme of gender budgeting, Indian scientific institutions, including CSIR, are mandated to incorporate women-friendly policies in their structures. Also, Women in Engineering, Science and Technology Initiative provides an avenue for scientifically inclined women researchers and scientists. Few other initiatives include Curie, Kiran, Biocare, etc. In the last news for the day, Ministry of Law and Justice notifies panel to address issues related to the queer community. The committee headed by Cabinet Secretary has been constituted in compliance with the direction of the Supreme Court in the 2023 case of Supriyo v. Union of India. In this landmark case, the Supreme Court had refused to grant legal recognition for same-sex marriages, stating that it was a matter for the Parliament to decide. The committee will recommend measures to ensure that the queer community faces no discrimination in accessing goods and services and that they are not subjected to involuntary medical treatments, violence or coercion. The term queer community refers to people who identify themselves as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or intersex (LGBTQ+). Unfortunately, many members of this community face significant challenges including social exclusion, homelessness, low educational attainment and limited access to healthcare. Notably, the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act of 2019 provides for the protection of the rights and welfare of transgender individuals in India. The Supreme Court has also made several landmark rulings in recent years that have had a significant impact on the queer community. In the Pika Singh vs. Central Administrative Tribunal case of 2022, the court recognized that families may take the form of unmarried or queer relationships and that atypical families are also entitled to the protection of the law under Article 14. In 2018, the court decriminalized homosexuality in the famous Navtej Singh Johar vs. Union of India and in 2014, the landmark Nalsa vs. Union of India case granted legal recognition for transgender persons. In today's Place in News, we will discuss Greece with its capital Athens. A recent report warns that Greece is facing alarming population decline. Let's discuss its political features. It is the southernmost of the countries of the Balkan Peninsula. Its bordering water bodies include Aegean Sea in the east, Mediterranean Sea in the south and Ionian Sea in the west. Its land borders are surrounded by Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria and Turkey. In terms of its geographical features, its rivers include Eklos, Evros or Meritsa and Nestos. And its major mountains are Mount Olympus, which is the highest, 
Mount Smolikas and Mount Wotsikaki. As we conclude today's main news, let's have a look at some quick updates. New Zealand and the Cook Islands signed a treaty to recognize whales as legal persons. A legal person is a human or a non-human legal entity that is treated as a person for legal purposes. A University of Melbourne expedition to Antarctica has discovered that wind drives the formation of colossal rogue waves. Rogues, also called extreme storm waves, are those waves which are greater than twice the size of surrounding waves. Rogue waves can form in large bodies of fresh water as well as the ocean. Researchers have discovered a type of organelle called nitroplast in a marine algae Braradusophera bigaloi that can fix nitrogen. Nitrogen fixation is a biological process in which nitrogen gas is converted into a usable form for cell growth. Three new species of fish from the family races are found to be using tools. Jensen's checkerboard and moon are these new species and they live in the Lekadev Sea. They use live or dead coral structures as anvils to break the hard shells of sea urchins for their food. Recent research highlights that the bumblebees are resilient to pesticides. Bumblebees belong to the genus Bombus are important pollinators for many wildflowers. They are fuzzy insects with short, stubby wings. They are larger than honeybees, but they don't produce as much honey. Noyal River of Tamil Nadu facing issues of pollution and choking by plastics and sewage. Noyal River originate from the Velangiri Hills called as South Kailash, a division of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. The river flows through Coimbatore, Tirupur, Karur and Erode districts before joining the Kaveri River. Israel's successful interception of drones and missiles launched by Iran has been officially named Operational Iron Shield. Israel is protected by a multi-layered defense array which includes Arrow 2, Arrow 3, David Sling and Iron Dome active defense systems. Archaeological excavation reveals 5,200-year-old Harappan settlement at Patta Bet in Kutch, Gujarat. It is near Junakhatia, an early Harappan necropolis or mass burial site. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this episode of News Today engaging. For the solutions to today's quiz and to access the PDF version of News Today, remember to visit the provided links in the description below.